Hello students. So we continue the mono hybrid class in this session also. Okay. So in the last session, <coughs> we ascertain the genotypes or the what are the genes that are responsible for tallness, comma, darkness. How the Mendel ascertain the genes or the factors or how the Mendel represented the character, uh, the factors, how the Mendel represent the factors for these genes, all right, for these characters. So, tallness is represented by means of the two genes, capital T, capital T, because each character is controlled by two genes. To express this tallness, two genes are responsible and these two genes are capital T and capital T. Here in this plan, to express the dwarfness, to express the dwarfness, two genes are required and these are represented by recessive uh, that is small letters small t capital t because this is a recessive character and this is a dominant character right so the genes that are responsible for or the genes that are coding the dominant character or the dominant trait is known as dominant genes the genes that are responsible for the expression of dominant character or a dominant trait is known as dominant genes. And whereas the genes that are responsible for the recessive character, the genes that are responsible for the expression of this recessive character is known as recessive genes. So now we know the terms dominant genes and recessive genes. Now I am using instead of dominant genes, dominant alleles. So hereafter we have to use the term dominant alleles for expression of for expressing the characters, not the genes. Why? Because okay, no problem at all if you use the genes also, but the correct word is the alleles. Then why we have to use dominant alleles instead of dominant genes? So what are alleles? See here, the two genes that are coding for a single character. So both the genes are responsible for expression of tallness in this plant. I repeat, both the genes are responsible for expression of a single character that is tallness. Whenever two genes are coding for a single character and which are located on the homologous chromosomes, then those two genes are known as alleles. We should call them as alleles. Now these are the homologous chromosomes. This is one homologous chromosome pair. This is a centromere position. So what, what are homologous chromosomes? Homologous chromosomes. Samajataita chromosome. Asal yendi. Samajataita chromosome. Rendu chromosome lo, okay size lo undi. Centromere okay nirmana ni kalli gaunda tam. Centromere ka position almost okay laga unda li. Same size lo unda li. Centromere position okay laga unda li. Almost the gene sequence that is present on the chromosome. Both the chromosomes are both are similar. Suppose here capital E is there, here also capital A or small a. Here capital B is there, here also the capital B or small. A. Like that. So more or less, more or less, the gene sequence if at all similar. If the two chromosomes are in the same size and the centromere position is also at the same place and the gene sequence is also the similar. Then this pair of chromosomes are known as homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes. Sama jata yuta chromosome. Rendu chromosome lo okay recommend it twenty nirmana ni kaliko undali, okay size of centromere position okay laga undali, gene sequence koda okay laga unte, are endu chromosomes me. Sama jata yuta chromosomes andaru. Sadaranga in a homologous pair, this is one pair. One belongs to the paternal, other belongs to the maternal chromosome. Okay, the paternal chromosome kind of, okay, maternal kind of check them. We know that that is also studied in your, in meiosis process. Right, okay. So, these are the two homologous chromosomes. Now, in this plan, if see here, <coughs> okay, suppose there is one gene here and one chromosome, that is capital T. And another homologous chromosome, here at the same locus. Locus means what? Place where the genes are present on the chromosome. That place is referred as a locus. 
ఎక్కడైతే జన్యు ఉంటుందో క్రోమోజోమ్ మీద ఆ ప్రాంతాన్ని మనం లోకస్ గా చెప్తాం సో దిస్ ఇస్ అనదర్ దిస్ ఇస్ అోకస్ సేమ్ లోకస్ ఆన్ ద సెకండ్ క్రోమోజోమ్ ఆన్ ద సేమ్ లోకస్ యూ విల్ ఫైండ్ ద సెకండ్ జీన్ దస్ ఇన్ దిస్ ప్లాన్ వై నోట్ దట్ సెవెన్ పెయిడ్స్ ఆఫ్ క్రోమోజోమ్స్ ఆర్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఇన్ ద పీ ప్లాన్ వై నో దట్ సెవెన్ పెయిడ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫస్ట్ పెయిర్ సెకండ్ పెయిర్ థర్డ్ పెయిర్ లైక్ దట్ విల్ ఫైండ్ ద సెవెన్ పెయిడ్స్ ఆఫ్ క్రోమోజోమ్స్ so out of the seven pairs one of the pair is consisting of all the seven pairs will contain the number of genes you forget that one of the pair is consisting of these two genes to express this character and these two genes are located on the same locus of homologous chromosomes and these two genes are responsible for the expression of a single trait that is a tallness now if that is a case these two genes are termed as alleles now these two genes are termed as alleles that is the meaning of allele these are also known as allelomorphs allelomorph m o r p h allelomorphs alleles are allelomorphs yugma vikalpalu evan cheppali vitini yugma vikalpalu yugma vikalpalu anta mari oka lakshanani code chese itanti rendu genuulu ఒక సమజాతీత క్రోమోజోముల మీద ఒకే లోకస్ లో ఉన్నట్లయితే లోకస్ మిస్ ప్లేస్ ఉన్నట్లయితే ఆ రెండు జన్యువుల్ని యుగ్మ వికల్పాలు అంటారు యుగ్మ వికల్పాలు అలీస్ నథింగ్ బట్ అలీస్ సో హియ దీస్ ఆర్ ద డామినెంట్ జీన్స్ ఆర్ ద డామినెంట్ అలీస్ డామినెంట్ జీన్స్ బికాస్ దీస్ టూ జీన్స్ ఆర్ కోడింగ్ ఫర్ ఎ సింగిల్ క్యారెక్టర్ వీ షుడ్ కాల్ యాజ్ అలీస్ the two genes that are coding for a single character that are present on the same locus of homologous chromosome we should call as allele so here here after we are using the word dominant alleles like that here we have to use the word recessive alleles so dominant alleles and then recessive alleles of the genes right okay we know the these two terms also so dominant character is represented by dominant genes and thus dominant genes are we should call as dominant alleles so we know the alleles also. now another two terms here important genotype and phenotype right genotype and phenotype janu rupamu drushya rupam oka jeevilo unde etanti lakshanaliki sambandhinchina janulu gurinchi cheppataniki suppose tallness deeniki sambandhinchi idi oka lakshana deeniki sambandhinchina etanti janulu gurinchi cheppatanni genotype janu rupam anta so what is the genotype of this tall plant capital t capital t padu mokka yokka janu roopam enti ante padu mokka lo padu lakshanani kalaga cheyataniki rendu janu lo upayogapadni aa janu lu enti capital t capital so ipudu aa janu lu cheppadam em ani cheppali janu roopam antam so this is the genotype of tall plant like that what is the genotype of dwarf plant small t small t this is the genotype janu roopam potti mokka yokka janu lu enti కొట్టి లక్షణాన్ని కలగ చేయడానికి సంబంధించిన జన్యువులు ఎలా ఉన్నాయి స్మాల్ టీ స్మాల్ టీ సో ఈ స్మాల్ టీ స్మాల్ టీ ఇప్పుడు ఏమవుతుంది పొట్టి మొక్క యొక్క పొట్టి లక్షణానికి సంబంధించి జన్యు రూపం మిగతా వాటికి కాదు పొట్టి లక్షణానికి సంబంధించి ఇది పొడవ మొక్క ఈ పొడవ మొక్కలో పొడవ లక్షణానికి సంబంధించిన జన్యు రూపం క్యాపిటల్ టీ క్యాపిటల్ టీ మిగతా లక్షణానికి సంబంధించి వేరే జన్యువులు ఉండవచ్చు వేరే అలీస్ దట్ ఈస్ దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ మెటీరియల్ హియర్ హియర్ వీ ఆర్ కన్సిడరింగ్ ఓన్లీ ద టాల్నెస్ ఫర్ టాల్నెస్ అర్ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ ద టాల్నెస్ two alleles are there what are those alleles capital t capital t now these two capital t capital t alleles are representing the tallness that is one trait so these are the gene composition this is the gene composition for this tallness so this gene composition is re- referred as a genotype so padu lakshanam kalaga cheyataniki deenlo rendu alleles unnai rendu yugma vikalpalu unnai aa rendu yugma vikalpalu ela unnai ani cheppatame genuro means oka mokkalo gaavachu oka jentulo gaavachu oka oka jeevilo లక్షణానికి సంబంధించిన జన్యువుల గురించి చెప్పటాన్ని జన్యువుల గురించి చెప్పడానికి జెనెటిక్ కాంపోజిషన్ ఎలా ఉంది అని చెప్పటమే జన్యు ద జెనెటిక్ కాంపోజిషన్ ఆఫ్ అన్ ఆర్గనిజం ఇస్ టాండ్ యాజ్ జీనోటైప్ వేర్ యాజ్ ద ఎక్స్టర్నల్ అపియరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అన్ ఆర్గనిజం మేబీ ఆఫ్ ప్లాంట్ ఆర్ అనిమల్ ఆర్ హ్యూమన్ ద ఎక్స్టర్నల్ అపియరెన్స్ బయటికి ఎలా కనిపిస్తుంది అని చెప్పడం ఏమవుతుంది ఫీనోటైప్ దాన్ని దృశ్య రూపం అంటారు సి ఇఫ్ ద జెనెటిక్ కాంపోజిషన్ దట్ ఈస్ జీనోటైప్ ఈస్ క్యాపిటల్ టీ క్యాపిటల్ టీ ఉన్నది మరి అలాంటప్పుడు ఇక్కడ ఈ మొక్క బయటికి ఎలా కనిపిస్తుంది పొట్టిగా కనిపిస్తుందా పొడవుగా కనిపిస్తుందా బయటికి ఇది పొడవైన కాండాన్ని 
కనిపిస్తుంది అంటే పొడవుగా పెరుగుతుంది సో పొడవు లక్షణాన్ని ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేస్తుంది సో ఈ జీనో టైప్ ఉన్నప్పుడు దీనిలో పొడవు లక్షణం కనిపించింది బయటికి ఎలా కనిపిస్తుంది దృశ్య రూపం చూడటానికి ఎలా ఉంది పొడవుగా ఉంది సో ఇప్పుడు ఈ దృశ్య రూపం అంట ఈ పొడవుగా ఉండటానే దృశ్య రూపం సో ద ఎక్స్టర్నల్ అపేరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎ క్యారెక్టర్ ద ఎక్స్టర్నల్ అపేరెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎన్ ఆర్గానిజం ఈజ్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఫీనో దృశ్య రూపం సో దట్ ఈస్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ జీనో టైప్ అండ్ ఫీనో టైప్ ద జెనెటిక్ కాంపోజిషన్ ఈస్ అ జీనో టైప్ వెర్ ఇస్ అ విజువల్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ విజువల్ విజువల్ అపేరెన్స్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ ద ఫీనో టైప్ రైట్ జన్యు రూపము దృశ్య రూపం ఓకే సో వీ హ్యావ్ లెర్న్ అబౌట్ దీస్ టూ టర్మ్స్ ఆల్సో జీనో టైప్ అంటే ఏంటి ఫీనో దృశ్య రూపం అంటే ఏంటి జన్యు రూపం అంటే ఏంటి ఇది కూడా తెలుసు ఓకే నో వీ హ్యావ్ లెర్న్ ఆల్ దీస్ టర్మ్స్ కమ్స్ టు దిస్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అగైన్ okay so far we as a train or we designed the genotype up to here we design the genotype or the mendel designed the genotypes of tallness comma dwarfness like this over the capital letters and here with the small letters we design the alleles okay he labeled the factors with the alphabetical letters okay now <clears throat> what is the genotype or which type of alleles are present in the f1 plant so for this okay we know that this is a diploid p plant is a diploid plant that contains 14 chromosomes diploid number 7 pairs of chromosomes here also the dwarf plant 2n is equal to 14 that is 7 pairs of chromosomes are there whenever this plant or well, this is a female plant now this female plant is producing the gametes we know that the gametes are always haploid we know that the gametes are always haploid because they are produced after the meiosis only if at all meiosis occurs the chromosomal number reduced to half suppose if you take the human beings suppose this is the in humans with the male parent and in the this is a male parent let us consider and the female parent okay so the male parent produce the sperm cells okay so the male diploid number all human beings will contain the 46 chromosomes here also the female parent which can okay 46 chromosomes and the male parent after the meiosis in the testis okay within the seminiferous tubules after the meiosis male parent will produce as a sperm cells how many uh, chromosomes are present in the sperm cells means 23 the sperm cell is nothing but the male gamete so the, the total number of chromosomes present in a gamete is represented by letter n that is nothing but the haploid the number of chromosomes present in a gamete is nothing but a, it is represented by the letter n and we should call it as haploid set of chromosomes so the haploid number 20 female parent will produce the xl xl will also con xl is nothing but the female gamete it contains 23 so now after the fertilization once again swarm fuses with the xl so the nucleus 23 plus 23 again 46 you will get the diploid human being so these gametes while the gametes are forming why these gametes are containing only the half the number of chromosomes 4623 means here the meiosis occurs so if at all meiosis occurs the chromosomal number will be reduced to half so after the meiosis okay after the gametes fusion again you will get the diploid number of chromosome so all humans are diploid no doubt at all likewise in plants also so here the pea plant the pea plant diploid number of chromosomes are 14 14 like 46 here here it is 14 so this is a female parent okay so 46 the female parent will produce a egg cell so here this plant is also producing inside the ovary it is also producing the ovules right here see here this is the gynecia style and stigma it is consisting of ovules so inside the embryo sac you will find the egg cell so these are the egg cells so these egg cells in female female that is in female plant in the gynecium the egg cell is haploid that is nothing but the female gamete here also the egg cell is produced only after the meiosis so whenever the egg cells are forming that means whenever the embryo sac is forming there occurs the meiosis we know that megaspore mother cell to megaspore megaspore develop into the embryo sac and within the uh, megaspore embryo sac you will find the egg cell we know all these phenomena so the egg cell is always consisting of only the haploid number of chromosomes that means only the seven chromosomes are there here haploid 
So here, male parent, okay, female parent, pollen grains are produced. So the pollen grains are nothing but similar to the male gametes. Their pollen grains later forms the male gametes that are similar to the sperm cells. So here the male gametes are haploid. So here also the pollen grains are produced from the microspore mother cells after the meiosis. So pollen grains are haploid. So these pollen grains later forms the haploid male gametes. So whenever these pollen grains falls on the stigma, they produce the pollen tube and produce the male gametes. Male gametes are also haploid. So here the pollen grains, these are haploid. Haploid means half the number of chromosomes. Means here, if half the number of chromosomes, so here XL with the seven chromosomes and the pollen grain with the seven chromosomes. Okay, you leave that part. Suppose this female parent is consisting of two genes for tallness. Just now you leave the chromosomal number, just consider the genes. So in diploid state, for tallness, two genes are there. Suppose this plant is producing the egg cell, it contains only the half the number of chromosomes. Means what? Half the number of genes. So half the number of chromosomes means here half the number of genes only. So here these are the two alleles. So whenever these, whenever this plant is producing the egg cell, that egg cell will contain only the half the number of these two alleles. Means the egg cell will receive only the one gene that is one allele captured. Thus here all the eggs, here the egg cell contains only T, not the TT. Here it contains only the allele T, here also only allele T. Now the pollen grains, pollen grains will contain, here the pollen grains after the meiosis. So half the number of chromosomes means half the alleles, half the number of chromosomes means they will get half the alleles out of the total alleles. Mar uh, of the alleles, for this deployed alleles is T, T. Half the allele means each pollen grain will receive only the half the number, that is only one small T. So each pollen grain will contain only, not the T, T. For this dwarfness, they receive only the half of the number of chromosomes, means half of the alleles. Half of the alleles means only the small T. Now this pollen grain will fuse with the egg cell, that means the pollen grain forming the male gamete. The male gamete contains small t here. Because we are considering this is a male parent and this is a female parent. Vice versa, you may also take, right. So this is pollen to carrying the male gamete. So whenever the male gamete, male gamete will contain small t. Now this is the zygote. The zygote will contain capital T and small t. For the length of the stem, two alleles are there here. The zygote will develop into the embryo. In that embryo, the embryo, see here. Zygote is formed by the fusion of male gamete, male gamete with the egg cell. And inside the zygote, the egg is consisting of capital T, whereas the pollen from the pollen grain, that is a male gamete, it is small. Thus, the zygote will become diploid. Again, here the zygote will become diploid. So it contains capital T and small t. Capital T from the egg cell and the small t from the pollen grain. So once again, the plant will become diploid. The zygote later forms the embryo and the ovules are transformed to seeds. Now, if you collect these seeds and so on, these are the, the seeds if you planted and the seeds will develop into the only the tall plant. That is the F1 plant. Then what is the genotype of this F1 plant? Okay, the, what is the genotype of this F1 plant? What is the genotype? What are the genes present in this plant? One is a capital T, other one is a small t. How this plant, F1 generation plants are appearing? They are all tall. See here. Upo renulu, paragrenulu, haploid, ekesthetical untai, meiosis tarvata, kabat din lo, sogum chromosome le undali, seven undali, vatil lo, sogum chromosome and sogum alleles matra enter outai. And out of the two alleles, the gamete, the pollen grains will reduce half the number. That is TT, dan lonchi, wakati well tundi. And the pollen grain local, wakati matra ve untundi. E lakshanaric samanich. Vere lakshanaric samanchi, vere geni rolochi. But E lakshanaric samanchi render T lo, waka small T alil well. E lakshanaric samanchi, excel. Excels farm outuna pudamotundi. Excel a put measis tarata farm outundi. So measis lo half the number e untundi. And the two alils lo, excel lo, waka alil matra unda, waka sundi. So it can only capital T luna. Pollen tube, pollen grain, and this small t will be male gamete of fusion group of capital T, of small t, j got low on to the so deployed nature which is deployed means failure. So, right. So, this is a tall plant which shows a character 
uh, the, what is the genotype here? Capital T and small t genotype. But it is he, even though here the two alleles are there. One is the capital T, other one is small t. So even though small t, small t is responsible for dwarfness. Capital T is responsible for taller. Even though here the small t is there, the plants are not showing any dwarfness. The plants are showing only the tallness. Means what happened here? The capital T allele is only expressing its character. The small t is not expressing its character. Means the capital T is dominating the small t thereby or masking the small t. So the capital T is only expressing its character. So here tolerance is expressed. So that is the genotype of F1 plant. That is the genotype of F1 plant. And what is the phenotype of F1 plant? F1 plants are tall in nature. All the F1 plants are tall in nature. So, if you F1 plants, lo, you can plant the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You can the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. You can plant the F1 plant. And the F1 mokal yoke jenny roop maya hao thundi, capital T, small. Mar capital T small to the capital T for tallness, small T for dwarf. You can render the action of say, raw. Only tallness, dwarfness yon hao sundha, raw. Kutti ka kodam, only tallness. Ante yin kandhe, rindu jenny roop na, vaka jenny roop maathra character confusion. Tallness is expert. Ante yin rindu jenny roop ni, yin dominate chase in the, alay thandhe mask chase in the. Now, out of the two alleys, two alleys, you go, you call palo. If you have a tall plant, you can see that there is a tall plant. So here, this is a tall plant. So in, to, in this parental plant, the tallness is expressed by means of capital T and small t. Yeah, sorry, capital T and capital T. So these two are the alleles. Alleles. So yugma vikalpalu. Yugma vikalpalu. Okay. So, what is the direction of the direction? If you have a direction of the direction, you can see the direction of the direction. If you have a direction of the direction, you So, to express uh, for a single character, the two alleles are similar here. Here also, the, for dwarfness, the two alleles are there, and these two alleles are also similar. In, if that is the case, the two alleles that are coding for a single character are similar, then those two alleles are known as. Homo zygous alleles. Homo zygous alleles. Sama yugma jalu. Sama yugma ja. Yugma vikal. Sama yugma vikal palu. And sama yugma jastiti and. So, if you do, what is the relation to the two yugmas? Okay, let's go to the same yugmas. Same yugmas. Homozygous alleles or homozygous condition. Homo, similar. Here also the homozygous. So, these two alleles are homozygous dominant alleles. And here these two alleles are homozygous recessive alleles. But here, you will find the tallness here also. Here also, tall plus. Tall plants, <clears throat> but to express the tall plant here, only the two are here. Also, two alleles are there. Out of the two alleles, one is a tall allele that is a dominant allele, other one is a recessive allele. So, here to express the character, two alleles are there. One is a dominant allele, other one is a recessive. Whenever the two alleles that are coding for a single character are dissimilar, I repeat. The two alleles that are coding for a single character are not similar. That means they are dissimilar. Then these two alleles are known as heterozygous alleles. Heterozygous alleles. The condition is heterozygous condition. That is heterozygous condition. So here it is a heterozygous tall plant. You should call this plant as a heterozygous tall plant. And this is homozygous tall plant. Because the two alleles are homozygous in condition and the two alleles are in heterozygous condition. Here one more point is, whenever the two alleles are occurring in the heterozygous condition, which allele, what is the possibility, which allele is expressing its character outside? Is only the dominant allele. Which allele is unable to express its character is a recessive allele. So in heterozygous condition, 
because the dominant allele is expressing its character, all the F1 plants are in tolling condition, whereas uh, the T1, that is, uh, re, this is recessive only. It is not expressing its character. So, you will not find any dwarf plants. Thus, these alleles can be discertified in this cross. See once again, homozygous, dominant alleles, homozygous, recessive alleles. In F1 plant, you will find the two alleles of different type. So, it is known as heterozygous, heterozygous alleles. So, it is also known as heterozygous dominant. It is also known as heterozygous dominant alleles or heterozygous dominant plant. That is tall. So, thus, we can ascertain the genotypes of. So, far we are ascertained the genotypes of parental plants and the genotype of F1 plant. Alright, then what about the F2 plants? Okay, what about the F2 plants? So, whenever these F1 plants, F1 torn plants are self pollinated and the seeds are collected and they are grown, then those plants will become some F2 plants. So, in F2 plants, both tall plants and dwarf plants are there. Then, what is the genotype of tall plants and dwarf plants? How, what is the ratio of them? We will discuss in the next session. Alright, so up to and this we finished up to the F1 generation so far we completed and in the next session we will discuss about the F2 generation how the F2 generation alleles are there how the F2 plants are there okay what is a, a genotype of F2 plants and what are the what is the genotype of uh, pheno, uh, phenotype of F2 plants we, all these things we will discuss in the next session all right thank you